Okay. Well, before we really, really get into this example, let me reiterate. So much of this final exam, guys, can be done in your calculator. So if you know how to operate your calculator, you can do well on this exam. Okay, I'm telling you, you can do well on this exam. So if we're doing something on the calculator and you don't know what keystrokes I'm using or you don't know how I got where I got, please, please, please stop me or ask me right after we finish um, if you don't want to speak up in front of the entire class, but make sure you know how to do each of these things in your calculator. All right, so first of all, let's talk about domain and range. Okay, because we talked about that with um, our quadratic function, so we're going to talk about it with our polynomials. So first of all, the domain, it's all real numbers. Okay, any polynomial function has a domain of all real numbers. Now remember what that's referring to. It's what x values will give me an answer. So if I plug a number in, am I going to get an answer out? And the answer for a polynomial function is yes. There are no problems. You can raise any number to the fourth power. You can raise any number to the second power. You can multiply. You can add. You can do whatever you want to any number, and you're going to get an answer. So that's why the domain is all real numbers. We'll get to the range here in a minute. Um, but right now, uh, let's move on to the next easiest part. The next easiest part is the y-intercept. Okay, just like with quadratic functions, it's that constant on the end. So the x is always 0 because we're talking about the y-intercept. So we have a y value. And the constant on the end here is 2. So the y-intercept of this function is 0, 2. Now look really quickly for me at example number 2, negative 2x squared minus 4x. There is not a constant on the end, so it is 0. Okay? So that's just a little side note there. I wanted to point that out. If there's not a constant on the end, then the y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay, uh, let's see here. X-intercepts now. Okay, X-intercepts. Now, when we had quadratics, if we could factor it, we like to factor it. Well, we can't factor an expression with four terms in it uh, right now. We may be able to do some of them later on, but we can't do that right now. So our only option is to use our calculator. Remember I said x-intercepts are solutions, roots, zeros. So press second trace. Number two is zero. Okay, it wants a left bound. You have to move your cursor to the left side of where it crosses the x-axis. Okay. Notice in this case my y value is negative when that's the case. Press enter. Right bound. you got to move it to the right side of where it crosses, my y value is going to be positive. Press enter. Okay, so one of our x-intercepts is negative 1.5920. Remember, I always want you to round to three numbers after the decimal. So 5, 9, that 5 rounds up that 1. Okay, but that's just one of them. It crosses again. It looks like it's at positive 2 according to the graph on our paper. So let's look at the table and see if it is indeed positive 2. It is not. Okay, if we look at the y value of positive 2, it is positive 2. So clearly it's just very steep right there. So we do need to use our calculator. Second trace, 0. Okay, we've got to move over here. This time the left side is going to have a positive y value. The right side is going to have a negative y value. Okay. So, yeah, it's just a little bit bigger than, than uh, 2. Technically, that would round to 2 point, I don't know, 2.099. Yep. Okay. Now, here's one of those weird cases where, look at that y. I don't know if your calculator gave you the same y. Mine did not give me 0. But remember, it has that e with the negative 12, that scientific notation, that it really is 0. Okay, you can see we are sitting on the x-axis right there. Um, that's just the calculator being kind of weird. Okay, so let's see here. We talked about domain, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts. Let's figure out our maximums and minimums, our extrema. Okay, now since these two are really close to each other, I'm going to adjust my window so that I can see them a little bit more clearly. I'm not just going to zoom out or zoom in. 
because sometimes I lose part of my picture. So if I'm looking at it, I really don't need the bottom of this graph. There's nothing really going on there. So I'm going to press window, and I'm going to change my Y minimum to negative 2. Okay, I'm going to change my Y minimum to negative 2. I'm not going to change anything else. Um, I'm just going to change my Y minimum to negative 2 to see if that helps me out. See if that kind of separates my picture a little bit. Okay. Gives me a little bit more detail, but these are still really close. So now I'm going to go change my X values. Okay, I'm going to change my X minimum to negative 5 and my X maximum to positive 5. So I can kind of spread it out horizontally. Okay, that's a little bit clearer. There's a little bit more separation between this maximum right here and this minimum right here. Okay, I give you a little bit more detail, but I think this is good. Okay, so I'm going to find that first extrema. It's a maximum. Second trace, maximum. So it wants the left bound, so move my cursor to the left side, press enter, right bound, move it to the right side, press enter, and then press enter again. So I have a maximum at negative 1, positive 2. Now I'm going to say maximums because I have two of them. Negative 1, positive 2 is minus. And while I'm doing maximum, I'm going to go ahead and find the other one. And I'm going to do the same thing. Second trace, maximum. I'm going to move my cursor over here to the maximum on the right side of the graph. Find that one. 1.366, 6.848. Oops, that's the minimum. Okay, now I'm going to find that minimum that's in between these two. So, second trace. Minimum this time, number three. I move my cursor way back over here. Left bound, right bound. The minimum is at negative. Make sure that you get those negatives. 0 0.366, 1.658. Alright, so we've got domain, we've got the y-intercept, we've got the x-intercepts, bless you, maximums, minimum. Um, the only thing left, we've got to talk about the range, and then we're going to talk about the end behavior. Okay, so let's talk about the range now that we've got our maximums and minimum. Okay. The range, remember, it's the y value, so go ahead and put you a y. Now, do we have an absolute maximum value or do we have an absolute minimum value? We have an absolute maximum, okay? Our graph comes up to a peak there, and then there's nothing above that point. So that means all of our y values are going to be less than or equal to that maximum value. Well, that maximum value is that maximum at 1.366, 6.848. We're talking about the Y, so we use the Y value there. Okay, all of our Ys are below 6.848. Okay, last thing, let's talk about our end behavior. This is pretty easy. We're going to talk about the left side and the right side. Okay, the left side and the right side. <clears throat> now, with these graphs, they make it really easy on you because they give you the arrows. Okay, now on your graph, you don't have the arrows, but we're just looking at the far left and the far right. So for this one, the far left side, look at that left arrow, it's going down. Okay, the far left side falls. Or you can say the y's approach negative infinity. I'm not 100% sure if they're going to use the infinity stuff or not. Uh, my issues are in that group right over there. Okay. 
the right side also false because this is an even function. The two ends do the same thing. So those y values also go to negative infinity. Okay? So these are all the things that we can describe about polynomial functions.